Good boy. Too. He's a working dog. At least somebody knows how to use that thing. <laughs> We are back at my house for another project. We're gonna take down some half walls in my entryway on the sides of the stairs. They kind of don't look good. They lean like this. There's no way to fix it. We're gonna take them out today and I'm gonna replace them with some really cool metal railings that we built up in the shop. We're also gonna do a built-in coat rack that has a cool architectural look to it and maybe some other stuff. So let's get going. So since last time you were here, we've done a couple of other things. We're always working on projects here. Uh, we did repaint the fireplace a different color to kind of give it a little contrast, which turned out good. That was chalk paint, which we painted over the tile even, and it stuck. Oh, well, it I, know, I did notice that yeah. was different the last time you were here. Yeah, so that looks cool. That was my wife's idea. And we've also redone the 70s bathroom that had the black toilet, if you remember that. Let's check that out. Oh, I remember that. Welcome to our remodeled bathroom. We did this board and batten look. And that's just uh, adhered to the drywall with Lexel, <laughs> and I popped a few nails. We painted it, new mirror, new light, and lo and behold, a normal colored toilet. Like it? It's the best toilet I've ever seen. Yeah, so same vanity though. Right there is plum, and you can see that in a three foot high, it's about an inch and a quarter out of plum. And as a builder, that just really makes me mad. If I would have framed this myself, and I'm not sure how they did it till we get in here, but I would have lapped this down through the floor system, plum, like the end board, and then built the rest of it. And I'm pretty sure they didn't do that, so that's what caused the problem. I'm a drywall surgeon. I wonder what it calls you to take splinters out of the kids' hands. Yeah. The reason I'm cutting this with a knife instead of a sawzall is this might kind of be like a finished edge or an edge good enough to just to run a bead of caulk against to a piece of trim we're gonna install. If we just just hack, <laughs> hack it, it's gonna be real rough. Uh, All right, here's the fun part. Uh-oh, hold on, hold on. Do you want you know it to what? smash it or do you want, it's gonna go everywhere. No, I wanna take, I gotta get a grip on it somewhere though. Yeah! That's the way the rest of the house looks because I have three kids. <laughs> I mean, it's that new construction wow, look. Wow, you guys really do amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Bruce Lee, let's see what you got. All right. Ready? Eric says he's just going to kick this drywall right off the back. And then I'm going to fall down the stairs. We've got it confirmed here that this does not lap down into the floor framing and therefore it's not very good. So if you're gonna build a little half wall for yourself, definitely lap this end piece down through the floor joist and screw it off really good. I hate doing drywall and I'm terrible at it as well. So to avoid having to patch this with some drywall, we're gonna pack it out with some half inch plywood. And then we're just gonna put one of these leftover trim boards across it like that and we'll terminate our railing into that. We don't have to do any drywall, which I think's the way to go. Sarah, I'm gonna kick another wall down. You wanna watch? <laughs> Another thing I've decided to do is remove this piece of flooring because it doesn't hang out with a bullnose like it should, number one. And number two is it's kind of already worn out and gnarly looking. And number three, I was thinking we should just cut this piece of flooring here and go straight across with a new one with a mitered corner so that here, here, and here all look the same even if they don't match this old flooring exactly. Careful. Ooh. <laughs> that was awful crunchy. 
You can see that the ends of these flooring boards are not all even with each other, and that's because they didn't need to be. They're under a baseboard. That's how I would have installed it. But we need to basically cut a straight line on this so that when you put this piece of bullnose in, it mates up nicely. So I'm gonna mark and cut a nice straight edge, and I'm measuring to see which boards are the furthest in, and that's what I'm gonna go with. And I think four and an eighth right there is that maybe four and three sixteenths would be a good number off of our plywood layer there. So jobs like this would be near impossible without one of these oscillating tools. Well, I believe they've been building for like millions of years without it. I know, and I didn't have one until probably five years ago. Yeah. And I've been building 15 years before that, and just stuff like that was like a chisel and a knife, and I don't know, it was a lot harder. I think you got it cleaner than it was before we started. It's a mess, bro. <laughs> We're gonna run to Lowe's, take a piece of the flooring and match the stain and get some boards to replace on the floor there. And the second part of our project is prepping these boards to make our little coat rack thing. I'll throw a picture up here of what it's gonna look like in the end. So we're cutting them to length. We're chamfering the edges with a hand plane to make them nice and clean. And then we'll throw some stain on them. Here's a look at the stain we're gonna use and that turned out really nice. It's a gel stain, and um, that was just something I had at the house is the reason we're using it, but I don't think I'm gonna beat that with much else. If you're wondering, these slats are one by three. I bought them like that at Lowe's, and these are one by twos that'll be mounted to the wall that these will mount to. And this gel stain, we're brushing it on. We were waiting three minutes, and then we're wiping it off, and that gave a pretty good looking finish, kind of like what I wanted. So that's what, it, that's what it looks like. It looks crazy, doesn't it? Yeah. But it doesn't splash or run, which is actually a nice thing. It's like brownie mix. Uh, yeah. It probably doesn't taste like brownie mix. <laughs> Golden pecking. <laughs> there it is. This looks real professional, guys. <laughs> I think Sticking you need a bigger truck. <laughs> just dump it on the ground. Are you sure? Yes, I you just... No, you dump it on the ground. You dump it. Yeah. See, this guy knows how to do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Keeper. Keeper. Uh, dogs love the remodel. <laughs> Whoa, easy, girl. Easy. Don't push me. Easy. The stain we bought was not a great match. It's okay. I happen to have some other darker wood color stain. And so what we're gonna do is mix our stain we bought with a little bit of this together, make our own concoction, if you will, that hopefully matches that a little better. This is just too light and it's gonna drive me nuts. We got our boards cut here and I decided to miter the corners even though the boards aren't the same width. So it's like mm, something like 55 degree cut on these and I did it all with a skill saw. And so I have no preconceived notion that this is gonna fit perfectly. Hopefully it'll just be as good as the rest of the flooring up there, which is not perfect at all. So we're just gonna stain it and try it. We may have to do some adjusting once we get up there with the cuts and such. Who's laughing at me? <laughs> did like 30 minutes of re-leveling everything here. Nothing was just right. It was all just a little off and our boards wouldn't work out. So check it out, we've got our bull nose pieces put in and for the way we did it, I felt like it turned out really good. You know, it, it's not perfect and we used a little wood filler here and there, but it, it looks as good as the rest of the floor. Like check this out over here. This is kinda <laughs> as good as the rest of the flooring looks. So it matches, that's what we're going for. Time for the coat rack. Yeah, um, I'm way confused. <laughs> like, I have no idea how you're gonna turn this into a coat so, rack. So, 
these are gonna mount to the wall on those. Okay. And then it's just gonna have coat hooks just sporadically, like a few here, maybe hook down there or there for a purse or a backpack. Just not like just rows of hooks, uh, uh, just like every here and there. Here's my real parts, it was about 500 bucks for what I got here. Thanks for breaking that down quick for me. Yep. Appreciate it. it was killer. Morning, fellas. Right <clears throat> What's right. happening? Get some metal here. Oh, I got it all in there, somehow. I could feel my truck was le <laughs> leaning to the side on that one side. My truck always leans to the side, but I don't. I haven't figured out why yet. Probably because you got a bunch of weight on one side. Maybe, me and Ray are getting ready here. We're uh, drinking our beach body. You know, yeah, it's kind of weird. Hey, uh, yeah. Jamie did put LED lights up in this whole place and it's like standing on the sun in here. It is it, so nice. It helps a lot. I was actually worried it was too bright. Like when I, I first did it, I was like, <laughs> man, this is not good. It's too bright. But actually it's, it's amazing. Yeah, so and they're cheap too. These yeah. are cheap, like off Amazon or something, you know. Hopefully you'll see it in the video quality. Hope so. We'll find out. This will be the first one actually, since mm, we did it. Nice. Here. Yeah. If you didn't know it, Jamie's got a really nice metal working shop out here. He's got milling machine, lathe, he's got a bandsaw for cutting metal. And I would not have attempted this type of project if I didn't have a brother who had a metal working shop just set up and ready to go. So thank you. Hey, you're welcome. And also I got a couple guys, Jason and Ray, and I don't know where Jason is. <laughs> They're gonna help me. So this would be a lot of work if I was doing it by myself. It'd probably take me like a week to do this whole project, but we're gonna condense that time down into like two days total for the tear down, replace, it's all done. It just costs more money. Dang, that's some HGTV stuff there, yeah, buddy. Yeah, like Over before and after, I even kicked some drywall down Move yesterday. Move that couch. <laughs> <laughs> I told Sarah how Millie just boom, reamed you right in the crotch yeah. yesterday and took yeah. you out and she was laughing so hard. My <laughs> dog will just run up to you nose first and I know to turn sideways Ray was like, surely this dog is, surely this dog is gonna stop. Nope. Millie's, boom, Ray's on the ground. Jason got it on video. Oh, did he? Yeah. Man, it was so good. I kept replaying it in my head over and over last night. <laughs> What I will say is that I think I own about half of this equipment because it was purchased a lot with our Perkins Enterprises mm. money. Just I just want to throw that out there for anybody. It's like, oh, you're taking advantage of your little brother. Mm. You know? That is a good point. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you use it every now and then. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the deal. Here's a drawing of the railings we're building so that it makes sense for anyone watching us build them. That'd be nice, huh? Looks a little sketchy. It is. Yeah. But actually, that's, that's a good looking drawing. I'm, yeah. I'm impressed, actually, I, freehand. I, I just did it. So there's our two by two steel. That's our main part of the frame. Then we're using this half inch solid here for these intermediate horizontals. And I got a piece of flat stock here for this little vertical thing. And that's just, I felt like these were a little too long for these th uh, half inch to run. Like if my kids stepped on them, they would yeah, bend. they would bend. I think so. That's the plan. Now that we have our two by two pieces cut to length, we're gonna start putting the post bases on these guys. And Jamie's got a really nice jig here that gets the post centered on the base without having to measure it. It's next to impossible to get a plate welded on square and aligned on the end of a post without a jig. So. Gotta have a jig. I mean, I don't wanna brag or anything, but I got the best post base jig inside of Mississippi. I mean, if you're an amateur, I guess it's hard, but whatever. <laughs> Bingo. I'm gonna let Jamie tell you what kind of welder we're using, because I'm not as familiar. All right, we're using a MIG welder. Basically, you pull the trigger, a wire comes out. It's about the easiest kind of welding there is to learn and to use for something like this. Jason's in a hurry. He's like, get out of my way. I'm loading this thing. He's like, I mean, time's money. money, baby. Let's go. Don't look at the light. We are to the point where we're going to assemble these frames. And as opposed to woodworking, we have to clamp everything in position, make sure that everything is square, just like we want it, then tack it. 
And that's what we've got done here. And it's to a metal table, of course. A wood table might actually catch on fire when you're doing this. So Jamie's gonna zap it all together and then we're gonna go for the intermediate Basically, pieces. Just, uh... This piece is an intermediate vertical support for our horizontal half inch pieces. And Jamie had the idea that even though these half inch pieces are square, we're gonna draw a round hole in it big enough for them to go right through and then weld it up. So he's sizing these up a little bit by a little bit until they're big enough holes to put our square stock right through a round hole. I think it'll can work. you put a square peg in a round hole? That's what we do. Yes, you can. Jamie's got to show you guys the milling machine. I couldn't stop him. So I'm, this is what it does. If you don't know what a milling machine is, you're getting ready to find out. And Jamie restored this from a not working state, by the way. Yeah. All right, we're painted it how many colors before you like? <laughs> it's hard to pick a color. It's just like painting a house, man. I spent like three hours at the paint shop. That's, That's like a huge understatement. <laughs> automotive paint. <laughs> okay, let's see yep. it. Let's see it go. All right, I'm taking about 15 thousands here on a pass. much fit in the back seat because it's just starting to rain here big storm warning you better get home yeah and it's um, good though the only problem is that window is gonna have to be down <laughs> mm, i wouldn't worry about that <laughs> i'll see you <laughs> now that the rails are installed, I can tell you that I really love it. My wife thinks it looks great as well, which is awesome. There are, of course, a few finishing details that I haven't done yet that I'm going to get to now. Number one is I need to put a few coats of poly on this bullnose all the way around, and I need to keep the dogs and kids off of it, which is going to be the hardest part. And I also need to touch up the drywall and paint. I haven't done that yet. I need to finish this handrail, and let's talk about that for a second. To pass code, this handrail would need to come up and do a little jog around this bullnose and come across this railing and return right there. And don't crucify me, but I'm not gonna do this to pass code because it's my house. And if I ever sell it, I'll have to probably fix it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return the handrail right here. And then for myself and my family, I feel perfectly comfortable grabbing a hold of this railing as the handrail to get the rest of the way up and get to the top. So that's what I'm gonna do to avoid having this handrail that comes across and ruins the clean look of these railings. So again, not recommending this, but for my own house, it's what I'm doing. One other finishing touch I'm doing here is I'm painting these vertical strips behind here and I'm doing that like this, it's about impossible. But I looked at the wrong picture that my wife sent me and the one that was supposed to be was wall colored strips with horizontals a different color. I missed it and so I'm paying the price right now, but it's getting done. Okay, I'll admit it, it does look better. Looks a lot better. Just for the record, I do put my foot down and tell my wife no sometimes on things like that. Uh, I just couldn't quite tell you when I did that the last time. Here's my new handrail, which is oak, round, and it's got a flat bottom for the brackets to mount to. I kind of wish though, after thinking about it, that I would have made this thing out of metal, but I am gonna paint it black to match our furniture upstairs and the railing we made with some chalk paint, and then I'm gonna spray some satin polyurethane on it. So it'll kind of match and it'll be a little cheaper and I can do it without having to go back to the metal working shop and bother Jamie again.
That is a wrap on another project here at my house. And there's plenty more to come, by the way. I'm gonna redo the kitchen and the deck and probably every other room as well when I get time. But thanks for remodeling with me today. Hope you guys have a great one. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.